a Canadian Radio Sanctuary podcast. I spoke with the group's leader and founder, Skip Prokop, and asked him what he thought of the changes, the loss of Bob McBride, and what they saw for the future with the group. I think the group is, is a lot more exciting simply because... Uh, from an audience uh, point of view, you get to see so many of the people do so many things in the band that you never saw before. You know, the thing is, is that it's like, you know, it's. Th- I think there's more individual personalities projecting now, you know, than before, and, be- and as a result of that, it's become really a total band, you know, because everybody's taking part. Now we spoke with Larry Smith, who was originally. Now, Larry, you were originally with the uh, trombone. Now you're on keyboards because Paul left the group to get into the management side of Lighthouse. What, what do you think of the changes that have happened within yeah, the group? Yeah, that's right. When Paul left, I switched over from trombone. That's what I used to play. Yeah. And I took over a camp. Were you originally a piano, or were you doing everything all the time? Anyway? Well, well I mean, actually, the, my minutes. original instrument that I, I personally play was piano. I've been playing that for years. So ever since I was four years old, I've been playing piano. I don't know. But when I joined Lighthouse, they didn't need a piano player. They needed a trombonist. So I quickly learned how to play trombone. <laughs> no, actually, I'd, I knew how to. I started off playing trumpet in, in Lighthouse and switched to trombone. And it was really easy to switch over to piano. It was the most natural thing to do rather than get a new guy. My personal opinion is that it's better now than it's ever been before. Yeah, especially uh, since, well, I don't know how to put this, since Bob is no longer in the band. It's completely changed. It's become more, vocally, it's become uh, more of an opportunity for other people to sing. Yeah. Musically, it's, it's still uh, the same kind of thing. Yeah. Same kind of thing, but I think just the feeling in the band has changed because of the fact that everything's not focused now on one person like it was before. Now it's focused on the whole band, and everybody feels more part of the band because of that. The songs are probably better than they've ever been before. That's just natural progression and everybody's ability to write. Most of the songs individually written, or was it more of a group effort in all the songs now? No, they're changing that way. No, they're they're all individually written, but but they're a group arranged, most of them. We bring a song in in a rehearsal hall, and everybody adds their own ideas as to how it should be arranged. And the record plant in New York looked out really good for you. Oh, yeah. It's really... It's a nice change, plus the... Uh, I think the studio is a little bit better, or, or maybe not the studio so much, but the uh, people working there were a little better than we're used to. Speaking with Don DeNovo of the string section, Don, what, did the idea at first of getting into a rock orchestra appeal to you? You're one of the original members. What were your uh, feelings? Did you like the idea? Yeah, the the freedom, spirit of the things uh, was appealing, obviously. All the uh, thieves involved in the rock business I found, I found and still find quite repulsive. But in an artistic sense, it was a chance to become totally involved in something because you can't do anything in rock without being totally involved. And so I'll call it rock, otherwise it's showbiz, which I still find revolting. <laughs> Before the... Lighthouse, I was uh, doing studio work as a violist in Toronto. Uh, just breaking into that after working in radio for a couple of years. It's a way of um, being insane and having it accepted mm-hmm. and using your education and sensitivity and whatever to um, communicate a simple act of beingness in a particular situation. Lighthouse 73. One of the big changes in the group, of course, was the loss of lead vocalist Bob McBride. And that happened just before the New York recording session, which was about four weeks ago. And they had trouble with the Thunder Sound Studios in Toronto, so they had to move to New York. To tell us more about what happened, here's bass player Al Wilmot. Al? Well, there's not much to explain other than the fact that there was new equipment in the studio. Right. And, uh... They didn't exactly know how to run it, plus there was a problem in it, so they didn't know how to fix it. So we had all the instruments in Thunder Sound, and, and then we went to New, we went to New York. So we went to New York because we couldn't use Thunder Sound. And we finished everything in New York. It took us about a week. We finished all the instrumental tracks, and then uh, and Bob was helping us by singing through the microphones and stuff. He was just about to do his vocals with it. He had this nervous breakdown that everybody will find out about later. 
And uh, so then he flew home with some of the rest of the guys, like myself and Don and some of the other people that had done all their stuff. And so Skip and the rest of the guys were stranded back there. And they, they, you know, are good enough singers to where they could do it. So they sung the vocals. And the other people that had written the tunes sang the vocals on the new album. So as a result of that, and it's happened with Bob sometimes before different things. And so it, they decided it would be best to go along without him. And we did, like I said before, we did three weeks solid of rehearsal for the show that you'll see tonight. Teaching everybody the vocal parts and maybe rearranging a few things and we got about half new songs that nobody's heard yet to play plus some of the old favorites. What do you think of the new album? Is it much different than the previous? It's different in some ways. I think it's much more it was much better planned out. We knew it we knew the material a lot better our own selves. So it went pretty easy in the studio. We do, we arranged it and everything, did everything before we went in so that we knew it cold and it sound I think it's going to be really good. They got the best sounds on this they've ever gotten. I haven't heard the whole thing. I haven't heard the final vocals, but I heard the final band tracks. I really like it. All the other albums were done uh, for GRT were done in uh, Toronto. Did you yeah. want, like New York? Oh yeah, New York is New York itself. We just saw a small section in New York, but uh, the record plant is really a bunch of guys that really really can help you like uh stay up for recording, make sure everything goes good, and they know, they seem to get fit right in and get your moods, you know, and know when you're up to play and when you're not up to play, and right. things like that, you know. And the, really the, the crew at the, at the record plant really helped out a lot. They're a completely different crew than uh, the guys back home.